So one of the emotions that seems to be running high these days is that of anger. Uh, and I think this is just as true for adults as it is for young people. There are a lot of reasons to be angry right now as we look at our world. And I think sometimes, you know, as we've talked about before, some of those feelings, things like anger are really appropriate and constructive. And at other times they most certainly are not, right? So what are the healthy ways for addressing anger in order to improve overall happiness, especially for our young people? Yeah, I mean, well, first, just to kind of you know reiterate, I think anger is appropriate right now. It's normative right now. Anger is normative in the face of social injustice, right? Anger is normative in the face of like the kind of frustrations that come with a global pandemic, right? Like it, it's gonna feel frustrated and angering if you're missing your school year, or your, your routines are all messed up, right? Like these are normative emotions right now. The, the problem though is when they become kind of out of hand, right? Emotions are there to do something, right? They're, they're, they're there to call us to action, whether that's you know leaving a bad situation or a scary situation if we're kind of sad or afraid or kind of taking action, motivating us to do something in the case of anger. The problem is when it like is too much, right? Or if it's affecting you negatively. And I think this is the, the point where we realize that we can actually control these things. That, like a certain amount of it is okay, but an out of control version is, is kind of on us to do some work to sort of regulate, you know, using some of the techniques we've talked about. And one of my favorite uh, kind of stories, a sort of parable that, you know, teaches us how to like, you know, regulate anger and all kinds of other negative emotions that are, are sometimes feel out of control um, is this wonderful Buddhist story of the second arrow. Um, and so, you know, the parable goes something like this, Buddha's talking to his followers and he asks, you know, is it really bad when you get, you know, hit by an arrow, you know, the arrows are flying around, I guess, back in Buddha's days where like, if you get hit by an arrow, is that bad? And Buddha's followers would say, yeah, super bad to get hit by an arrow. And he says, but what if in addition to the first arrow, you also got hit by a second arrow? Now you get not just hit by one, but two. And his followers say, yeah, getting hit by a second one is even worse. Like that's, you know, much worse than just the first one, right? Buddha goes on to say, you know, the things that happen to us are natural momentary reactions. Those are the first arrows. Like those are kind of out of our control. You know, they're, you know, you know, the poop happens in life, you know, poop's gonna happen, right? But Buddha goes on to say that second arrow is our reaction to them. And that is often under our control. Not the first momentary, like when it comes out, but what we do afterwards matters, right? You know, so I would say the things we're angry about, the circumstances that are happening to make us angry and our initial anger reaction is a lot of the first arrow, right? You know, the fact that innocent black men are getting shot by the police, that is a, you know, a huge first arrow and one that's going to naturally make us angry, right? But if we then take that anger and, you know, you know, get yell at our teachers or stewing so much we can't do our homework or make nasty comments on social media that are going to upset other people and come back, like all those other things are the second arrow. Like those are things that we can control, right? And so the question is, how can you either ride out your anger, you know, through processes like RAIN, I think we talked about in one of our other questions, or how can you figure out how to use that productively? Can you channel that to, you know, writing your congressman, you know, like going out for a protest, right? You know, taking, you know, donating, like angrily donating money to causes that you believe in, right? You know, these are the ways to channel it in a positive way. And so often when I'm dealing with anger in particular, I think about the second era, right? You know, it's not right that there's, you know, racial injustice in the world. It's not right that we have this global pandemic that's, you know, hurting the lives of my students. Those, both of those things make me really angry. But it's also not right that I like, you know, yell at my husband, you know, for how he unloaded the dishwasher or, you know, get so frustrated that my students can see it in my face, right? Or, or hurt myself, right? You know, sometimes I'm like slamming things around and I break things, right? Like, that's all on me. Like, that had nothing to do, you know, with like, like, that's not like the police officer who shot George Floyd's fault. Like, that's on me now, right? And so I think controlling the stuff that we can control is really important and we need to, right? We need to be harnessing these emotions towards fixing the problems that are making us angry, not kind of making things worse. That's helpful, yeah, thank you.